Welcome back to Mari's Music. My name's Mari Rutsch. And I'm Spoon Phillips. And we have a lot to talk about. How you doing today, Spoon? I'm doing wonderfully. It's always great to be back on the microphones talking about really cool guitars. I just realized I open every show exactly the same way. I could probably reuse that instead of re-saying it. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything, but I noticed that too. <laughs> Well, when you have so many great episodes of our podcast, some things are going to feel repetitive, but it's uh, it's it's just so good to be talking to you. I always forget myself in the intro, and I, I'm not creative until we get our feet under us. And I know we have a lot to talk about today, because today's topic comes from a very, very, very special listener, my wife. Ah, uh, well, hi, Lori. <laughs> Lori was nice enough to send me an email and said, why have you guys not talked about buying guitars under a thousand dollars yet and i had a good answer for her i don't know so we're gonna do that today Ooh, ooh, oh uh, well there's certainly a lot of choices just within the walls of uh mari's music so so very cool have at it so where would you like to where would you like to start i mean we have we have a variety of different kinds of guitars that are relatively inexpensive when we're talking about professional level acoustic guitars uh, some of them are more affordable because of their size. Some of them are more affordable because of the materials used. And all of them are more affordable based on what uh, they call in the modern business world price points of what uh, people you know, are budgeting. And I'm sure I'm not the first person to tell uh, a lot of our listeners that when you're searching for an acoustic guitar and you don't want to go above a price, frankly, sometimes going above that price pays off in the long run. Uh, and getting what you're really happy with. But $1,000 brings us a plethora of guitars. And I think it's still true, uh, Chris Martin told me this several years ago, I think it's still true that 50% of the acoustic guitars, steel string acoustic guitars sold in the world today cost less than $500. Maybe that's gone up to like $600. So we're still talking about in this conversation today, higher end, upper half, of the guitar market, uh, what you know, a lot of people would call real guitars or serious guitars. And you can still get a lot of guitar for less than $1,000. I think that's really important to mention, and I'm going to echo that. You can get so much for 1000 bucks, and you could certainly take the argument in either direction. If you spend 1400 you get so much more guitar than you might find for 900 And there's always going to be a use case that's very specific. And no matter what we talk about on today's program, one of you guys listening might say, yeah, but if you get a Blue Ridge ABC and compare it to a Martin ABC, uh, here's the reason you should always spend the extra couple hundred bucks. I'm not necessarily going to be interested today into diving into specific little details like that. So if we do present something to you today on today's show, and it just sounds like you'd rather spend a couple hundred bucks more. We're not going to say that's wrong, but in the interest of keeping today's show on track and to make some sense in a very big picture way, we're going to try to tell you what you can get for less than $1,000, why you should consider these guitars against each other, and why today we're going to pretend we can't spend more than 1000 So let's go and take a look at the obvious elephant in the room. Blue Ridge guitars have three series. They have the Contemporary series, you step up into a higher pay grade for the historic series and even higher still is the top of the line pre-war series so looking at least at the blue ridge side of the argument i can tell you without diving deep you can pick almost anything if not everything in the inexpensive contemporary series and depending on the trim you might even be able to take your thousand dollars and stretch it into a couple of choices in the historic series taking the same big picture look back to our nazareth company it's a little bit of a misnomer because when you spend $1,000 or less on a Martin guitar, you're not getting a Nazareth-made product. It's going to be made in Mexico. So we're going to compare a lot of great Chinese imports from Blue Ridge and Mexican imports from Martin. Martin's got the X-Series and the Road Series. And maybe just a couple of offshoot examples that might be the exceptions to the rule. We're going to look at the Contemporary Series from Blue Ridge and the X-Series and the Road Series from Martin. So if you're keeping score at home... You shouldn't be because it's not a competition, but Martin already has two series in the, in the lineup today against Blue Ridge's one. How do you feel about that to start, Spoon? I think you're on a roll. So uh, how do you want to introduce uh, the first guitars? 
maybe for today's episode, Spoon, we could do some role playing. Would you pretend to be a customer? Uh, certainly. I have been a customer, so I wouldn't be pretending, but I'll pretend like I'm shopping for a guitar today. Ring, ring. Maury's music. Maury speaking. Who are you? Hi, I'm uh, one of your favorite customers, Spoon Phillips. And, you know, I've been really hankering for a uh, an affordable guitar that I can, you know, take out on the road, take into uh, places to play that I might not want to risk one of my more expensive guitars. So, but I can't really go over a thousand bucks and I would like to maybe spend as, as little as possible under a thousand bucks to get that guitar. Well, I was told there'll be no hankering, but I'm going to try and help you. <laughs> I would like to point you towards the best guitar for you. At Mari's Music, we pride ourselves in saying we're going to get you the right guitar the first time. It's not only because we hate returns, but we want you to have what you want when you want it. And there's no reason to try more than once if we have a good enough conversation and we learn enough about what you want and what you can spend. There are going to be at least a few examples that might be right for you, and I'll do my very best to get that right in your direction. So if you say you want to spend $1,000 or less, let me ask you, is a cutaway important to you? Uh, normally it is, but um, right now I'm going to say no. I'm going to ask you about cutaways uh, later because what right now I'm more interested in the fact that this guitar is going to be played almost always unplugged. So what I'm interested in really is probably... Uh, volume and big body. So I'm probably talking in the dreadnought sort of guitars, at least at first. That's what my mind is uh, imagining. Let me ask you, how do you feel about mahogany or rosewood as a back and sides tone wood? Are you completely towards one of them and not the other, or do you have an open mind? No, I definitely have an open mind and, um, and like both. And I know that rosewood t typically is more expensive, so maybe uh, we can look at the mahogany family of guitars. Absolutely, we can. The next thing we can talk about comparing is a traditional dovetail neck joint important to you, or would you be open to getting an X series or a road series guitar from Martin with a neck joint that they call mortise and tenon? Uh, but again, right now, I, uh, I do, I've always liked the idea of the dovetail neck joint, but I know that limits the buying options but one of the reasons uh, Blue Ridge is interesting and that's in the price range I'm looking is because they actually have um, traditional dovetail neck joints. So what do we have in this price range that does have a, a traditional full-size glued-in dovetail neck joint? Well, going in that direction, we have to go to Blue Ridge and we're looking at anything in the contemporary series. So if you could join me on my website as we talk on this virtual phone call or pretend customer experience. I would like at this time to ask our listeners to get on MarsMusic.com right now so you can follow along and, and look at the, the exact same uh, models that I'm looking at or that Mari's talking about um, so you can take part in the, uh, in the experience. Yes, and if you're driving right now, don't. <laughs> How about new? No? <laughs> I can show you towards things like the BR70 from Blue Ridge, the BR60, the BR40, and those guitars are all going to be the full dovetail. They're going to be the full-size dreadnought body. They're going to have a solid Sitka spruce top, and depending on which one you look at, the back and sides could be laminated mahogany or laminated rosewood. And we can also introduce pearl trim at the top of the food chain. So it's going to depend on a few different variants, but you could look at at least three or four Blue Ridge guitars that fit the description of being a dreadnought and having a dovetail neck joint. And we can make the argument for or against, is it worth spending extra money for the rosewood and or the pearl? How important are the looks to you when, you, uh, when you're going to be deciding which guitar you buy? I would say they're not as important as other things. And looking, I appreciate you pointing that out to me, going on the website and looking at the Blue Ridge BR40. One thing is you have this nice zoom in on the uh, image of the guitar. So you get a really good look at the Blue Ridge headstock, which is attractive and unique, you know, and fancy pattern and the tuning machines. Um, now what I see here, being an old Martin player, this re greatly resembles the old D18s before the reimagined series. 
So Black Binding, Black Pickguard, Rosewood Fingerboard and Bridge. That's really nice. That's, that, it's a good looking guitar with very classic looks. And a very, uh, we're talking about under a thousand bucks. This is $645. This is what you refer to as the laminate mahogany. So it's laminate back, back and sides of actual mahogany um, from the mahogany family, Rosewood, Borden Bridge. So uh, this is very impressive. This looks very similar and reminds me of the old Martin uh, One series, though this has a full dovetail neck joint and those did not have a full dovetail neck joint. So that's a lot of guitars right there. That's really, uh, that's a very impressive guitar. Now you had mentioned the BR-60 and the BR-70. And so BR for, of course, Blue Ridge and 60 uh, is for um, that level and body size. And so let me see, where is my BR-60? Yes, and the fact that the 60 is a two-digit number means it's in the Contemporary Series. The fact that it's a six means it's Rosewood. And the fact that it ends in zero means it's a Dreadnought. So we can take a little bit of a tangent as we go. That's how you know this is a Blue Ridge Dreadnought in Rosewood, and it's not a smaller guitar, and it's not a solid back and sides. So, and also you have the uh, image tab, too which uh, is below the description. And I think maybe some people don't always see that down there that give you a much bigger multiple photos of basically every aspect of the guitar. That's right. And uh, I can take this opportunity to tell you that as we're taping this, we have two BR-60s in stock. And on the images tab, you'll see eight high resolution pictures of both of those instruments and you can compare them and let us know which one you prefer. So, and again, here we have uh, that very cool looking Blue Ridge headstock and you get a close up of the tiny little, it's all in white, but you get a tiny little green petals or leaf petals uh, at the top that you don't notice in the smaller photos. But um, yeah, opus, classic overbacking tuners. This one looks like the traditional D28 in terms of the black pickguard, like the pre reimagined standard series D28, uh, white dots on the big domino dots looks like a mid-century, late mid-century D28. But a major difference in both of these guitars uh, from Martin's back in those days, the D28 and the D18 didn't have scallop bracing back then. And these all have very uh, lively scallop bracing too. So this is the Rosewood version of the BR40, or that's the mahogany version. So again, still laminated uh, Rosewood, in this case, back and sides but still a lot of guitar for the money, solid, solid spruce top. Yeah, really, really uh, it's attractive guitar, classic looks. Uh, these guitars have a 1 and 11 16 inch nut width, which um, I think people need to keep in mind since a lot of the industry now has gone to one and three quarter inch, which not everybody likes. So this is all, these are also options for people who uh, want a uh, sleeker, faster neck that even uh, Martin or offers now, except on a very few of the Martin guitars. And again, pre-war style for shifted scallop bracing that uh, you really rarely see in instruments of this price range. So those right there are both two really nice guitars. This one's 790, the other one's 645. So it's definitely more expensive for the Rosewood. And you had also mentioned the BR-70. Um, so let me seek that out. Here I'm sorting by price ascending. So I'm starting at the uh, most affordable and going up into, yeah, but uh, see, I'm not even going to leap that high up yet because now that I'm on your site and I'm being reminded of just how many Blue Ridge guitars are available for sale under $1,000. So be just staying in the dreadnoughts, the BR-140. So that's less than $1,000. So what is the BR-140? Ah, oh, you've successfully snuck into the BR Historic Series. The Historic Series from Blue Ridge graduates to a solid back and size with a solid top. So now instead of going with the BR-40, the BR-60 that have laminated back and sides, now you get solid East Indian Rosewood back and sides or solid mahogany back and sides. Yeah, so solid mahogany back and sides. So a step up in terms of that. Now I'd like to just remind people because we hear a lot about all solid tone woods and how important that is, uh, particularly in the soundboard. But a large population of the very expensive 
revered archtop jazz guitars have laminated backs. And that's a very, you know, very common thing to do. So I laminated, particularly if it's, if it's a lamination of the actual tone wood, not like the uh, Esteban guitars out there that are basically made out of boxwood <laughs> with, a, with a, you know, a, fine, a fine veneer, as Martin would call them, on the outside. And just like Martin's laminated like those SC models and stuff, they're still using an, a very resonant tone wood for the core wood and having uh, then a prettier outside to them. So when you're doing the real wood, real tone wood lam laminates, you're still getting a nice resonant voice. Um, is it going to be as resonant and complex as uh, truly solid wood? I would have to say no, but it's going to be much more stable and much less prone to cracking and, and stuff like that. So um, so anyway, now we're up to the solid wood. And we are uh, 140 is visually quite different because it has the, uh, the I don't know what people call it, the leopard uh, pick guard, uh, similar to what uh, the late Tony Rice had on his famous D28. So, um, so you see a lot of the top showing through, in addition to, to the uh, tortoise shell sort of coloring, um, which, you know, is something that Blue Ridge goes with. It's part of the Blue Ridge look. And uh, some people really like it, and other people don't like it so much. The particular one showing right now uh, seems to really fit with the top and almost like be a very organic part of the top because you see so much of the top showing through the pickguard. So very nice, BR140 going up into solid woods. So I'm just going to continue along this Blue Ridge uh, price line as we go up the elevator. And again, I'm I'm only looking at dread dots right now. They're all the uh, the small body ones here too that fit in there and uh, with cutaways uh, and so forth. If you really want to go off uh, jump the shark, there's also the BR40 TCE, their tenor guitar. And I know multiple people that own this guitar and are really happy with it as a tenor guitar, less than a thousand bucks. So you might want to check that out. Um, but back to the dreadnoughts. Now we get up into the Blue Ridge BR70. So as Mari pointed out, this is only two digits. So this is still in the contemporary series, but this is the very fancy uh, pearl trimmed beauty of that series and it has pearl hexagons that are i don't know if they call them open hexagons but the centers in very colorful pearl and then you have the pearl going all the way around the edge of the top as well and very attractive rosewood fingerboard and bridge clearly they are looking at the you know cosmetics of the uh, wood so they're very nicely figured. In this case, the one I'm looking at, which is serial number 2010 um, <laughs> that bridge uh, is actually perfectly straight grain and high contrast, the light browns and darker, dark brown blacks. So that's uh, very stunning and, and uh, effective. And a pearl rosette that is very similar to the Martin style pearl rosettes of the fancy Bartons. And um, some very attractive rosewood back and sides, and gold-colored open back uh, vintage-style tuners. So still under a 1000 bucks. Now, this takes us back uh, into that contemporary series. So it still has the 1 and 11 16th inch width nut, but we're back to the laminated rosewood. So very good-looking figuring on the rosewood, but laminated woods that keep the price point down when allowing a very fancy and attractive uh, pearl trim. So for the uh, the people that always admired those fancy pearly guitars on, at the Grand Old Opry, well, here's a, an interesting uh, pearl rosewood dreadnought. So, so I'll pass on that one because I'm going to want to put my money into, uh, into Woods and Tone and probably lean toward uh, going with the with the BR140 for the get those solid uh, mahogany back and sides. That would probably be my choice if I was sticking with uh, Blue Ridge and sticking with uh, Dreadnought for that money. Well, that's really helpful. And I do hope our listeners that have been paying attention have recognized what you can do with your money so far. Spending a thousand bucks with Blue Ridge, you have at least four or five choices. You can go mahogany or rosewood. You can stay plain or pearly. And that's just the Blue Ridge side of things. Let me play devil's advocate and ask you, if you want to spend that same $1,000 and 
at least for the sake of today's conversation, can we talk about where that money can go with Martin and maybe play the pros and cons? So yes, Martin, uh, you had mentioned that uh, to go into the price range of below $1,000, we're really okay at guitars that are made at the Navajoa plant in Navajo, Mexico, where Martin has been in business for over 40 years or going on 40 years. Uh, they started out making strings down there and then they moved down the X series and do special projects down there as well, like those fabulous SC models. And so a lot of people who are Martin centric sort of see the X series as sort of the stepchild, you know, definitely lowest price stuff. The back and sides are not made of wood. They're made of wood fiber and natural resins that um, are referred to as high pressure laminate. And they happen to be a great platform for uh, reflecting sound waves. And I've had X-Series guitars in my home. Um, and I had a, a, a guy who shared my apartment that had a DX1, which is, uh, which is all laminate, backsides and top. And every single person who played it that were, you know, relatively snooty, expensive guitar owners were always extremely surprised at how good it sounded and how pretty it sounded. And so, again, it's a lot of money for a uh, for somebody who uh, is just coming out of really basic Sears Roebuck kind of starter guitars and looking for uh, their first real guitar. But those X series guitars sound like real guitars. So I, you know, I would certainly recommend people consider them at this price point. Let's go take a look at the X series by price and. So I'm going on their site uh, and and your site at the same time and to just see what's new and interesting in the X series. So let me ask you this. When it comes to the X series, what sells at Mar Mari's Music? We do much better with the X series guitars that have the solid spruce top and going into the catalog these days when we're taping this show in 2022, it has to have the number two in the name, something like a triple O X two E. That means it's a triple O size and the two denotes that you have a solid spruce top. So when you get the opportunity to buy an X series guitars where only the back and sides are HPL, but the top is solid spruce, uh, there's no question that the solid spruce topped X series do sell better. But I'm always impressed with how good the, the uh, laminated tops do sound. They don't have the same kind of resonance, but if you're mainly plugging in and playing in open mics and things like that, a lot of that stuff's not going to come through a pickup into a, you know, into a backroom bar uh, PA anyway. But one of the other cool things about the laminated tops is that both in the back sides and, and the top, we're talking about photographs of wood. What we're really seeing is they're putting the look of genuine wood on these guitars. And now they're using these, the uh, Martin guitar uh, dreadnought that's got the Koa, the DX One E Koa. They use a beautiful high figured Koa wood uh, as the uh, image for this stuff, and they look spectacular. And yeah. the mahogany version is quilted mahogany, and the, we're talking about the actual wood plates that were used. Um, whoever got that on their guitar, was paying a lot of premium price to get wood that looked that good. And they probably, you know, that Koa, that Koa wood is probably one in a zillion. Uh, so very cool. And then you have the ones that have the normal, you know, normal looking tops, including Sunburst. You know, they have a, a uh, you can get guitars in the X series that have Sunburst. But also you get a 12 string. That I just see this right here on your website, though it's uh, not coming in until next month, maybe, or the month after. But there's also uh, the Dreadnought DX2E 12 string for less than 700 bucks. So people who always wanted to have a 12 string, um, but don't have, you know, don't want to invest a great deal of money. Here's a, a good sounding 12 string of Dreadnought body size for less than a thousand bucks. We haven't even started talking about the higher end guitars yet. I haven't even gotten into the twos. And then when you get into the, I guess that 12 string is a two. So we're now into the twos. 
So the two with the solid spruce top. Again, a lot of people will say that most of the, the guitar's tone comes from the soundboard. So having that solid spruce soundboard definitely matters. But a lot of guitar. But at the same time, the Blue Ridge, and when we're in this price range, the Blue Ridge definitely has uh, some advantages for people who are more, you know, definitely like the idea of the solid wood. And now we get in the DCX2E, $749. It is got the a rosewood pattern back inside, so it looks really nice, but cutaway. So here you have cutaway and onboard electronics for, for you know, less than 800 bucks. So uh, still a lot of guitar for the money. And I think Martin has always known that a lot of people, their old slogan used to be more people own or, or want to own a Martin guitar. What did you say? Uh, than any other brand. And I think the X series uh, gives a lot of people a chance to own a Martin. That's why my ex-roommate bought one. He uh, actually, uh, born and raised in England, uh, spent a good deal of his young adulthood and late uh, youth in Nigeria, where his parents were from. But he knew about Martin guitars. He, he was uh, aware of, not to the degree that somebody like I am, but he knew <laughs> that th he, that was a very trusted brand that a lot of legendary artists play. And so that was was already in his mind when he had to buy the guitar. He didn't play well enough to even play it himself so much as have the guy in the shop play different guitars and he came home with that VX1. I just have to laugh. It, it's funny you brought up that old quote that more people want to buy a Martin guitar or own a Martin guitar than you know whatever you were saying. And I'm sure that that quote predated the internet. But it's funny because when you said that a moment ago, our internet connection is a little bit unreliable. And it sounded like more people want to <laughs> own a Martin guitar. I don't know that they do. <laughs> well, I can't tell that. You have to warn me when that happens. So just for the record, that quote, this full quote is, more people own a Martin guitar or want to own a Martin guitar than any other brand. And I think, yes, I, that slogan, I think, goes all the way back to certainly the previous century. And I, I think it still holds true today. I like it the other way. <laughs> So uh, we didn't really talk about small bodies guitars much. I wanted to focus on the Dreadnoughts. Both Blue Ridge and Martin do offer uh, non-Dreadnought guitars, but Martin offers the grand performance size. Blue Ridge just gives you what is the equivalent of the triple O or OM body size. But in the, you can get a GPC X2E for $749. That's in that modern grand performance size. That's very similar to the Taylor size 14 and small jumbos by makers like Jim Olson and, and those kind of uh, boutique guitars. It's Martin's version of that, uh, whether you want to call it a mini jumbo or small jumbo or what uh, other, there's different uh, words for it. Uh, some people actually claim Gibson came up with that size in the fifties and I can't, um, maybe the Gibson one eight. J185 or something like that. Uh, that may have been the very first one, but this is Martin's version of it. And the GPCs are a little deeper in body than the uh, OM and Triple O or the aforementioned Gibson. So you get a nice bass oomph out of them that you don't hear out of the Triple O, triple o size. And uh, so that's available um, from the X series, $749. You can even, uh, there's an OMC uh, Black. If you want a black guitar with uh, onboard electronics and a cutaway uh, that looks super cool uh, for your Halloween ghoul costume or Screeb costume, if you want to also <laughs> play the guitar, well, here it is. So that's, you know, it's a, there's a, a lot to choose from. But let me ask you about the Road Series. Does the Road Series still contain guitars that cost less than $1,000? It does. And right before we get into that, I want to take a little bit of a pause and ask our listeners to try and digest what we just ran through. Uh, a little bit of that might have felt like you're listening to this show through a fire hose, and we apologize if we threw too much at you too fast. <laughs> but it's easy to get excited because when you're spending $1,000 and you look at the Blue Ridge line and the Martin line going up into the Blue Ridge Contemporary, sneaking into Blue Ridge Historic Series, and then the Martin X Series, even before we hint towards the fact that, yes, you could get into the Road Series just a little bit. There's one more key component that I failed to bring up, and I think now is a good time to talk about it. These guitars do feel different. When you look at the Martin line across the board, and I mean any Martin guitar for the most part, 
And it's true to say almost any Blue Ridge guitar for the most part, they just feel different. And part of that's got to do with the neck carve. Part of that is because the Blue Ridge guitars have taller, thicker fret wire. And many of the Blue Ridge guitars have a more narrow nut than the Martin guitars with some obvious exceptions. So Spoon, let's just touch on that really quickly. If you have never played a Martin and you just come from Blue Ridge, or if you've never played a Blue Ridge guitar before, but you only know what the Martins feel like, that's got to come into play as far as your decision. And I wonder how much we can really give you as far as coaching and advice, except to say, uh, don't forget about that key component. Well, I think that's a fair caveat. I think the, uh, I think the Blue Ridge uh, neck shape, I don't know if they call it a C shape or whatever, feels like it cups my hand more. And that's uh, those kind of neck shapes. That's one of the reasons Martin in the old days went with the one in uh, 11 16th inch in uh, 1939 was their, ne their necks had gotten really thick, uh, you know, for stability reasons before the, the days of adjustable truss rods. And so they made the nut narrower so that when you're reaching around, it's easier to reach around while still having your hand in those days, a big, deep V neck. And um, Blue Ridge by no means is a big, deep V neck. They're still a very modern, low profile sort of neck, a very modern neck, but it is a different shape. And on the other side, not everybody likes the Martin uh, neck shape either. So their modified low oval that they went to just because that seems to please the most people. Um, but I think there's, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's probably listeners that might comment if, on the YouTube version of this that already own Blue Ridge and Martin, and they might be able to uh, speak better on how they feel the necks are different. I really don't think that feel is, is as big a deal because Again, we're not talking about like the difference between a, a D18 authentic, you know, with a big clubby neck and and uh, a regular Martin. They, they are, but you're right, they are different. Um, I think most people in terms of their higher frets, some people argue that higher frets uh, lead to uh, purer tone and purer notes because of the string angle when you're pressing down on the string. But, you know, obviously Martins sound pretty great. So, well, <laughs> honestly, I think we're both splitting hairs in that. I think tone, they also have their own special tone. So you can play two uh, guitars, a Martin and a Blue Ridge, uh, all the way up to the uppermost expensive Blue Ridges and play the closest equivalent to the other brand. And they don't sound the same. They may be built very much alike, but they have their own unique sound. And so uh, I would encourage people to go to Morris Music's uh, videos and just listen to the differences and you'll start to hear the Blue Ridge sound versus the Martin sound. I think the Blue Ridge sound is very lively and I'm not going to say vibrant because I don't, it's not like a shimmery sound so much as, as it's very bright and, and nicely defined. I think the Martin sound is famous for having a uh, thumpier uh, warmth down in, that comes out of the low mids that a lot of other brands don't have which leads some people to say Martin sound too muddy for them because they, they are used to a, a brighter, clearer kind of sound. So, so uh, it's a lot to choose from. I, uh, I sometimes don't envy people's having to go through this kind of choice. And yet at the same time, it's kind of fun. So staying under a thousand dollars in the road series, going back to dreadnoughts, there's one dreadnought with a spruce top in the road series under a thousand bucks, $949. Martin D10E, Martin D10E, solid sits good top. It's got a Sapelli uh, back and sides, and it is probably the best bang for the buck in all of Martindom for uh, a solid Sitka spruce top. But you can get the same guitar in a Sapelli top, which looks great, and it gives you much more of the uh, 15 series sound from mahogany, you know, it's a hard wood. Sapelli is uh, from the mahogany family uh, from Africa. And it is, uh, so you have a solid mahogany backsides and top guitar that's going to give you a, a mellower, sweeter tone and uh, that doesn't leap out as much as the, uh, the uh, Sitka Spruce top does, but still all solid wood guitar from uh, C.F. Martin and Company. And um, definitely worth checking out. 
and then also you have uh, non dreadnoughts. Uh, now um, you have these peli topped triple O ten E for eight ninety nine, um, which actually comes in left handed and it's available for sale at Maury's Music at this very moment. Right hand, left handed in stock. A uh, nice short scale triple O ten E looks cool. A very straight grain uh, Sapelli, so really uh, good looking guitars. And so you're just sneaking in, as Mari Mar likes to say, into the road series under a thousand bucks. But these are all of them uh, acoustic electric guitars with onboard Fishman MXT electronics that give you an onboard tuner, which I love. I wish I, they would put the onboard tuner in their, in their fancier models. But uh, down at the treble side inside the sound hole is a tuner that you turn, turn on and it cuts the signal so you don't have to be, you know, banging away, tuning your instrument uh, and having it come through the PA. So very cool guitars for not a great deal of money. Um, and we haven't even talked about the Martin Jr. guitars. Uh, the Jr. series is something I think people should seriously consider. So I'll, I've been blabbing long enough, so Barney, why don't you talk a little bit about uh, the juniors and then I'll interrupt you as usual. <laughs> that is so weird because Laura and I just watched Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade last night and I heard the word junior like a thousand times, so it's perfect timing. <laughs> do you have a, uh, can you do a good Sean Connery or should I try it? Uh, no, I don't. So you, you try more. Junior! No, that was more like Jack Black, but um, <laughs> of course, we played role playing earlier where you were a customer looking for a Dreadnought guitar. I should have said to you, are you going to include the Dreadnought Junior? Because the Dreadnought Junior is still a Dreadnought. It's a Dreadnought shape, just shrunk down a little bit. And if you, if you are still following along, Mari'sMusic.com, let's go to Martin, Martin by series, Martin Junior series. So taking a look at the Junior Series, I'm going to point you towards the Martin D Junior 10 Sitka for a good example. Here you have a Sitka spruce top, mahogany back and sides. It still is a Martin Dreadnought, just a little bit smaller, and it really does pack a big punch. I, again, as Spoon was saying earlier, we encourage you to take a look at the videos tab on this product. And of course, you'll find a lot of great videos on our YouTube channel right next to this video that you're probably watching. But the D Junior 10 Sitka is something you seriously should consider it's far below a thousand bucks. And it's one of these uh, guitars that is available with the Sapelli top or the Sitka top. So again, if you love the look and, and they use some really good looking Sapelli on these, I have to say, Sapelli naturally comes with that very straight copper sheen banding. And they, you know, this is, this is good wood. And you have, uh, and you also, this comes in a, a electric version and non-electric too as well. So. So that saves you some money too, if you're not as interested in plugging in. But when you do plug in, then the size of these guitars matters a lot less because you can turn it up as loud as you want and you can equalize it to, you know, um the bass and all that stuff, bring up the bass. So, yep, these are very cool guitars. If you like, love the uh, classic dreadnought shape or, or Western shape as people over in England tend to call it. Um, <laughs> It's a very cool guitar. Uh, the Triple O's also very cool guitars for the size. They, you know, they're designed to be uh, travel guitars to a certain extent. They're not as uh, not true parlor guitars. They're not super tiny, you know, but they uh, but they still are shorter overall, much easier to pack in a in a, uh, a camping trip, you know, vehicle that sort of thing. Uh, the uh, Triple O comes in a cutaway version. And the Dreadnought comes in the new uh, Streetmaster version, which is pretty cool with the artistically worn away Streetmaster finish. Still gives you some Dreadnought boom, you know, for that. But with the uh, with that shaded top on uh, Sapelli that uh, that was taken out of the 15th Street, uh, you know, 15 level Streetmaster series. So very cool guitars and. Um, all of them well under a thousand bucks. However, there is a junior that, a brand new junior that I think it's time to bring out because I think this is one of the coolest guitars that Martin's made uh, in, a very, in a long time. Ladies and gentlemen, stop what you're doing and listen. 
<laughs> this is the Triple O Junior 10E Sean Mendez. Now, a lot of people may not even be familiar with Mr. Mendez unless you're uh, among the younger adults in our population, but he's got his own artist signature model that is, you know, a lot of you remember the Ed Sheeran models and the, the day the Ed Sheeran model came out, it literally, it literally brought down the Martin website. There were so <laughs> many hits. And that was one of the really little mini, mini guitars. The LX, yeah. Yeah, one of the LX. So it was all, you know, it was all the high pressure laminate and all that stuff. Sean Mendez, this is an all solid wood junior. So this is, it is made entirely by 100% Forest Stewardship Council certified tone woods. And, and then it also has this very cool looking gig bag that is made uh, with uh, recycled polyester. So, it, you know, it's, it is uh, basically a, an environmentally friendly guitar, but it's super cool. And it has uh, better, I mean, I think it has a better look. It's got like an aging toner look to it. It looks more like a standard series instrument. And, you know, if I had... Uh, if I was in the market for a small guitar, and you know how the, the guitar market out there, all the major manufacturers now have little guitars. Well, this is certainly one of the most impressive little guitars that Martin has made. It's a 14 fret junior, so it's got a 24 inch scale length. It's got Martin X bracing, scallop bracing. It's got a one and three quarter inch nut. It's got the full two and a five thirty second string spacing, just like the standard series and the 16 and road series and all that it's got the, the neck shape that's uh unique to the junior series but solid spruce top looks very good uh tortoise pick guard and uh, antique toner it's got the uh it's got that modern bridge that they came out with on certain models that has less of an edge at the end of the bridge so it's more comfortable in your hands resting on it um uh, fingerboard and bridge are ebony certified though fsc certified forest stewardship council is a uh, worldwide organization of a volunteer voluntary organization about sustaining uh forests around the world and not just respecting the forests, but also respecting the people who live in and off of the forests a very good organization to oversee and encourage sustainable growth and and better practices in general in terms of how they go in with logging roads to get out, you know, um, to make um, you know the land more recoverable, all that stuff. So this is a less than eight hundred dollar guitar. Uh, granted, it's seven nine nine, but it's less than way less than a thousand dollar guitar. Really good looking woods. I have no idea how many they're going to make of this. It may be open ended, you know, if people buy it. I would be I would be uh, interested in owning one of these if I uh, if I had the moolah right now and were still like going into clubs regularly or you know traveling regularly I think this would be a very cool guitar to have and it's got you know some subtle you know it's got some subtle Sean Mendez uh, aspects to it but um, but uh, like his you know very simple autograph on the case and at the third fret but with um, with uh, you know like diamond and square style stuff out otherwise and so there's a very very cool small guitar clearly a big step up from the normal triple o juniors what i don't know what you all think about sean mendez um i know my nieces are big fans but um <laughs> the two martin signature models i owned the lawrence juber brazilian lawrence juber and the uh, pat donahoe a uh, deep body uh, OM with the slotted headstock. Both of them were purchased entirely about the guitar. They had absolutely nothing to do with the artist. I was virtually unfamiliar with Lawrence's music at the time I bought that guitar, other than uh, his time with Paul McCartney, and um, was not aware of the fact that he was, you know, played the James James Bond theme, you know, and other things that he did in movies and television and et cetera, et cetera, and stuff, you know, once I got to know him. So I would have no no qualms whatsoever about owning a Sean Mendes uh, without knowing much about him and his in his art. But uh, 
So there you are. I think it's, I'm, I'm sorry I'm going on so long about this, but I'm so, so impressed when Martin came out with this and I have yet to get, get to see one in person, but I'm certainly looking forward to it. I feel the same way. I, I personally hope this paves the way for more models in the junior series or the junior size where you get a real rosewood fingerboard and bridge and you get appointments. I mean, looking at this on the website, it almost looks like a baby little OM28. The fact that it looks more mature, it looks like a, a shrunk down vintage guitar and not something that's that just screams of inexpensive or entry level. And I'm not sure if you've heard it, but our friend Jeremy over on the AGF posted a new Guitar Day a couple weeks ago and played a really, really good video. Uh, he basically, you know, took delivery of this instrument and put a good video together, and it sounds really big. Oh, really? Of the Sean Mendes. Um, yeah. And I just like to mention this and this particular guitar is ebony Morden Bridge. Um, it's, you know, it's undyed. It's not dyed ebony. It's not perfectly black ebony, but it's actually not rosewood. It's in. And I, I'm totally a big believer that an ebony bridge gives you a darker, warmer sound than a rosewood bridge. Rosewood bridges definitely give a more of an airier, more open and airy quality. The difference between an ebony bridge and rosewood bridge is, you know, audible. You can hear it. It's easily as much influence on it as changing bridge pins or changing saddles, saddle material, you know, as that much of a difference. And, um, but anyway, this one particular guitar, this particular junior has got an ebony bridge. So I think that's very cool. It's one of the things I find uh, appealing about it. Let's pause for a moment and listen to a sound sample of a triple O junior 10 E Sean Mendez. This is our friend, Jeremy from the acoustic guitar forum. So yeah, so I you know I think we've uh, of offered a lot of options for people looking to buy a guitar under a thousand bucks just at Mari's Music Alone in 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 the stock they have right now, and we didn't even talk about the cutaways and the and the smaller body Blue Ridges. So I hope uh, the listeners uh, do take the time, um, especially if they're genuinely in the market for a guitar in this price range, because uh, a lot to choose from. So if I could take a, a second to recap, at least a little bit quickly, if you're looking at spending $1,000 across the Martin brand or the Blue Ridge brand, it's worth mentioning many of the Martin choices give you a pickup. Many of the Blue Ridge don't. Both brands will give you a padded gig bag and both brands will give you the limited lifetime warranty. The argument could be made that what if you spend a little bit more money, go into 14, 1500 bucks, even up to 2000, you're not going to get twice the amount of guitar. Spending $1000 in these times on an acoustic guitar with these two brands, your choices are really really meaningful and you get a lot to pick from. Absolutely. And I I was, you know, you kind of surprised me with this topic today and so getting on your website and and browsing by price, ascending price. I was genuinely impressed and surprised by just how much there is uh, available just on the, with these two brands under a thousand dollars. So I hope our listeners enjoyed uh, going through the uh, website uh, at the same time that I did and got to see all those really cool guitars. Well, for me, I like recording this podcast on the weekends because I had a long week at work and I want to get far away from it. So thank you for bringing me through my website one more day. <laughs> That's what I'm here for make your life better <laughs> well guys i hear the music and you know what that means so let me just say from all of us at maury's music thanks for listening hear you later this has been a presentation of maury's music your trusted source for martin and blue ridge guitars find us online at maurysmusic.com music.com